Did you know you could stop worrying about money forever? Sounds impossible, right? But today, I'm going to show you the most powerful verse in the Bible that can bring more money into your life. This could completely change your situation, no joke. We're talking about money today, but not just any advice. We're diving into what the Bible really says about it. You won't believe how much wisdom is packed in there. You might be wondering, why the Bible? Isn't it just a religious book? Well, it's not what you might think. Many years ago, when I had serious money problems, just like many of you watching might be facing right now, unsure about your financial future and feeling like you have no control, I started learning from a few millionaire mentors. I thought, if I'm going to learn about money, it should be from people who actually have it. Almost all the Bible's characters were business people. For example, Abraham ran a business with land, farming, and livestock. Joseph the dreamer went from being sold as a slave by his brothers to becoming Pharaoh's right-hand man. During that time, Joseph worked for a millionaire mentor who taught him about finances and how to manage money, which later helped him save Egypt from famine and become one of the most powerful men, second only to Pharaoh. Even King David started as a simple shepherd, the lowest class at the time, but he became the king of Israel. His son Solomon went on to become the richest and wisest man in the Bible. So what's the key takeaway? The Bible is filled with powerful verses about attracting, creating, and managing wealth, as well as how to develop a money mindset. Here's something you might not know. The Bible has about 500 verses on how to pray and another 500 on how to have faith. But listen to this. The Bible has over 2,000 350 verses about money. So the Bible talks more about money than it does about prayer and faith combined. Surprising, right? That shows just how important money was and still is. That's why it confuses me when people claim to be spiritual or religious but reject money, even though their own scriptures focus more on finances than anything else. There are 500 verses about prayer and faith but over 2,350 about managing personal finances and money. That's how important it is, and the Bible teaches us how to earn, manage, and grow our money. The story I'm about to tell you is amazing. When I learned this, I finally understood how to bring more money into my life. We've been taught that attracting money is just about lying in bed, saying affirmations or visualizing. And while that's part of it, there's so much more to learn about wealth. Let me take you back over 4,000 years to the story of Joseph the dreamer. He was sold as a slave for money. The person who bought him was a very rich man, a multimillionaire. Pay close attention because it's full of lessons about money, wealth, success, and how to keep going after your dreams. This multimillionaire bought Joseph and taught him everything about business. He showed him how to buy, how to sell, how money works, and how to manage it. It was like living with a millionaire mentor every day. Joseph learned quickly and applied everything, and they became good friends. Joseph helped his mentor become even more successful. But then something happened. The millionaire had a wife, and she became attracted to Joseph. One day, she approached him and tried to seduce him. But Joseph was a man of strong values and loyal to his mentor, so he refused her. The wife didn't like being turned down. You know how some women who marry millionaires just buy fancy bags and take pictures? She was like that. Angry from being rejected, she lied to her husband and said Joseph made a move on her. Even though it wasn't true, the pride made her say it. Because of this, the millionaire threw Joseph in prison where he stayed for 11 years. But this is where you see how faith and trust can guide you to your destiny. In prison, Joseph met other men. He had a special gift. That's why they called him the dreamer. He could understand dreams. One day, a prisoner asked Joseph to explain his dream. Joseph said, tomorrow you will be executed. And that's exactly what happened. Another prisoner asked Joseph to explain his dream. 
and Joseph told him, This is good news. Tomorrow you will be set free and meet Pharaoh. Before the man left, Joseph said, Please remember me and tell Pharaoh I helped you. The man was freed, but he forgot about Joseph, so Joseph stayed in prison for many more years. Later, as you might know, Pharaoh started having strange dreams. He dreamed about seven fat cows that suddenly became thin and weak. Pharaoh asked his wise men to explain the dream, but no one could. Then, the man who had been freed remembered Joseph and told Pharaoh about him. Pharaoh brought Joseph in to explain the dream. Joseph said, The seven fat cows represent seven years of plenty. Egypt will have a lot of food during this time. But after that, the seven thin cows represent seven years of famine, where there will be little food and a lot of suffering. Pharaoh asked, How can we prepare for this? Joseph, who had been trained by his millionaire mentor, knew exactly what to do. He came up with a plan. During the seven years of plenty, Egypt would save food instead of wasting it. You've probably heard the story of the ant and the grasshopper. The grasshopper sang all summer, while the ant worked and saved food for winter. When winter came, the grasshopper had nothing to eat and had to ask the ant for food. That's exactly what happened in Egypt. During the seven years of plenty, the people of Egypt lived lavishly, thinking it would last forever. But Joseph and Pharaoh's court worked even harder, knowing tough times were coming. When the famine arrived, the people of Egypt were starving and went to Joseph for help. Joseph had saved a lot of grain from the good years. He said, I'll help you, but you need to give me something in return. The people started buying food with their money, and Pharaoh and Joseph became even wealthier. When the people ran out of money, they came back to Joseph, saying, We're still hungry, but we have no money left. Joseph replied, You have animals, don't you? Trade your animals for food. When their animals were gone, they came back again, asking, Now what? Will you let us starve? He replied, You're going to sell the land, and I'll rent it back to you. I'll teach you how to farm it and make a profit from it. So Joseph the dreamer started trading wheat in exchange for the land of all the people of Egypt, and eventually he became the owner of all the land in Egypt. Now you'll understand something important about the Jews. Joseph didn't just rent the land back to the people. He knew they had no clue what to do with it. That's why some people suffer for so long. He taught them what he had learned from his millionaire mentor years earlier. He showed them how to manage the land, how to farm it for profit, how to feed themselves, and how to pay rent. This is how Joseph became the richest man in all of Egypt. He learned that in the good times, you have to work harder and save up for when hard times come. Depending on when you're watching this, you might notice that for many people around the world, hard times have already arrived. In the good years before, most people didn't listen. They just lived for the moment, following the carp diem philosophy, which works great when things are good, but it's not so helpful when times get tough. Now, you'll see why the Jewish people are one of the wealthiest groups. Jews study the Torah and the Talmud, but mainly the Torah. The Talmud is powerful too. For example, have you heard the phrase, if not me, then who? If not now, then when? That's from the Talmud. But back to the Torah, it's the Old Testament, the first five books of Moses, which include the story of Joseph the Dreamer. Jewish people follow a way of managing their money called the rule of thirds. First, they focus on business because they study the Bible, and it says all the great people in the Bible were entrepreneurs. And King Solomon, the son of King David, who was a shepherd before becoming king, said in one of his proverbs, don't work for someone else because they will take the best years of your youth and all your money. Jews take this literally and teach their children to be entrepreneurs from the start. Jews also follow the rule of thirds, which means they divide what they earn into three parts, one third for savings, because they learned from the Bible Torah about hard times, lean cows, so they save one third. 
The second third of their money is reinvested into their business to make it grow so that their money-making machine produces more. In good times, you must work harder. The third third is invested in land because during hard times, inflation happens and money loses value. Let me explain inflation. It means your money is worth less than it was two years ago. Why? Because when governments try to deal with a crisis, they print more money. If there were 10 bills representing all the money in the world, and now they print 10 more, the value is now split between 20 bills. So each bill is worth half of what it used to be. That's inflation. But when you invest in land, like Joseph the Dreamer and the Jews do, land always goes up in value. For example, inflation might be 8% this year, but land values could increase by 6%. Land keeps growing in value, while money loses value. That's why Jews are so financially smart, not all of them, but the ones who follow the traditional teachings. Are you surprised that the Bible teaches this? Many people don't know, and even fewer realize that the Bible is more than just a guide to understanding the law of attraction. It's also a powerful tool for training your mind which is why I believe it's the best resource for personal development. I hope this inspired you. Share this with anyone you think might find it helpful.